Good evening and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with us, another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and to have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you are standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I'm standing in need of. Let me start off by saying to all of those that it may be applicable to, Happy Mother's Day. And, of course, the Gospel Truth has a, uh, a special program designed this evening for the mothers. So we have a couple of inserts that will be print presenting to you and then after that of course I will come back and bring you a message. In fact uh, if you'd like you can go over to the book of Hebrews the 11th chapter and beginning with verse number 23 through 27 and you can wait for me there and I'll be there after a while and uh, we're going to be talking tonight about the mother of Moses and what she did for him. So Sit back, relax, enjoy the program. from their European tour to sing for us. A mama song, don't you love that? Your mamas are here. Okay, you introduce, starting with Juanette. Uh, that's my uh, grandmother, my mom. Uh, <laughs> Stand up, aren't you proud? Very proud, yeah. Did you know this day would come? Yes. You did? Yes. <laughs> Was he singing around the house and he had to say? In the bassinet. In the bassinet. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Nathan, no, introduce no. us to your mom. Yeah. Uh, this is my, my mother, love my life, uh, Miss Gail Harris. Uh, do you go to as many concerts as you can? Not really. You don't? No. Because you heard him sing all the time. No, I, I just, I don't travel as much as I would like to, but uh, I get to see a lot. If I see it twice, I'm fine. I'm happy. Really? You're happy? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get to see it on the Oprah show. Sean, introduce us. 
my darling mother, uh, Miss Joanne Stockley. Hi. Hi, Miss Joanne Stockley. Isn't it great? It's so great. Uh, it's so great. It's so great. Uh, Michael, introduce us to your mom. That's my lovely mother, Miss Omarnetta Thomas. How do you do? Y'all going to sing the mama song? Yes, yes. I love the mama song. This is for y'all, mama.
of God Almighty, I transformed the Gospel Truth radio program into our current television program. We had been at the University of California at Berkeley for 20 years on KALX 90.7 FM. And so when I was given directions to move forward, then of course I went about to try to make that happen. In the meantime, I had to comply with the requirements of the uh, public access station in order to begin. So on this one particular day I was over at mother's house and uh, I explained to her that I was just one person short of uh, having the required persons to be able to produce a program on the public access station. And mother boldly said, I'll help you son. So the training began. Mother was right there, observing, taking notes, putting her hands on the equipment. I know what it is to have a mother who trusts in the Lord and who believes in the power of prayer. Mothers, help your children. Encourage them to be all that they can be. You'll be blessed and your heart will be made glad. Your children will always love you. My mother, Sister Maddie Stevenson, she mastered the art of the digital video production technology. She operated the camera, the control board, the special effects generator. Uh, she directed, and she also was a floor director. And mother ultimately became the audio director, where she served there faithfully until she was called home. Rest in peace, mother, and thank you for everything. Your devoted, loving son, Alan. Well, I'm back, and as I told you, we would be coming from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 27. And tonight I want to talk about Jochebed. Uh -huh. She was the mother of Moses. And we want to look at what she did for her son. In other words, what the mother of Moses did for him. Now, of course, tonight there are many mothers that we could consider on this Mother's Day. I could start with Eve, the mother of us all. And then there was Hannah the mother of Samuel. And then, of course, there was Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, my choice tonight is Jochebed, the mother of Moses. Now, she was a mother in difficult times. And I know today, mothers, it's a difficult time because when she was growing up, raising her son, all the male babies were under the sentence of death. I know it might seem like that today, especially with some different ethnic groups who seem to always find themselves victims of violence. But I want you to understand that she acted in faith. And as a result of her action, she ended up being in God's Hall of Fame or Hall of Faith, over there in the book of Hebrews. And when you read Hebrews 11 chapter, you can see all the Hebrew, Hebrew, excuse me, all the heroes of faith that there was. And she happens to be one of them. When the baby was born, the Bible says over there in verse number 23, and you can read that and, and, and I will read it for you. Uh, it says, by faith Moses, when he was born, he was hid three months by his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. So by her seeing her son was a proper child, she had some great expectations of him. In fact, 
Exodus, the second chapter, verses 2, says that he was a goodly child. And then when you listen to Luke in Acts, the seventh chapter, verses 20, we find that he was exceeding fair. Well, you know, these are the kinds of reactions of parents. You know how it is when, when little Johnny or little Mary or a little uh, Jabu uh, or uh, Natasha, whatever you want to name them, whenever they were coming up, you know how you said, oh, he is such a pretty child or she is so beautiful. Oh, did you see the way he threw that ball? He's going to be a picture, a pitcher, or he's going to be a quarterback. Oh, she's so smart, she can be a nurse, or she can even become a doctor. Well, you know, you know, these things that you say, oh, they're just so darling, your little children. And you know what? She loved him as he was, and she expected the most of him. And today we should recognize that children should not be a bother, but they are a blessing, because the Bible tells us that they are from God. Over there in the book of Psalms 127, we come to grips with the fact that children are gifts from God, his heritage. We see then that this mother risked her life for her son. Over there in verse number 23, we can hear again because they were not afraid of the king's commandment. All right? So because she wasn't afraid, she acted out of faith. And she dared to violate the law of the king. All right? She dared to violate the law simply to save her son. Now, you know, there are times when it's necessary to break the law. Now, I, I know the Bible tells us we all ought to obey God rather than man. But we have biblical examples of apostles who found themselves in opposition to uh, statutes and rules of the king and what they did. And you may even remember Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego who refused to bow down to the king. So the point I'm trying to get you to understand is that there just may come a time when you have to uh, be in opposition to the law, keeping in mind that it's better to obey God rather than man. So in spite of the command of the king, she hid her son. In fact, they kept him there for about three months. She was not afraid. And so her son learned courage from her. And then she also imparted faith to her son. Listen to verse number 24 it says, by faith, when he was come to the years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. See, yeah, he learned something. Sin's only going to be for a little while, just a season. But what happens when you get involved with sin, sin has the capability of taking you further than you intended to go and keeping you longer than you intended to stay. So, I would just do everything I can to avoid the very appearance of evil. So now we see from this verse that, that faith moved from her to her child. And, and that was very plain, very clear. It says, by faith, Moses, when he had come of age. In other words, his mother now, who was his nurse, was teaching him about faith and how he should conduct himself as an individual. And then... You see, by divine providence, whenever God has something in plan, uh, when God has a plan in place, there's nothing that no one or anyone can do to hinder. Now, they might put a roadblock in the way and kind of set it off to a side, but, but when God gets ready to make the final move, it doesn't matter who's involved or what they think should happen, God's going to have his way. And so, you remember, if you go over there to the book of Exodus, the second chapter, verses 7 through 10, you can find out exactly what happened. So finally, after Jochebed had made a little, uh, her crib so that it wouldn't sink, that it would float, then she put it out there in the water. Her daughter followed it out, and she observed Pharaoh's daughter, who was out taking a bath, and Pharaoh saw, Pharaoh's daughter saw the, the crib and said, bring it to me. And she said, oh, that's one of the Hebrew children. 
And so by that time, the sister said, would you like for me to get a Hebrew uh, nanny so that she could nurse him? So she said, yeah. So she went and got, guess who? Jochebed, Moses' mother. All a part of God's plan. So when you trust in the Lord, when you teach your children like they are supposed to be taught of the Lord, then they can expect to receive some great rewards. And what did she do? She taught her children, she taught him about his people and her Lord. In other words, parents, mothers, you have to tell your children about the heritage. You have to tell them about our struggle because they need to know that this freedom that they're experiencing, it didn't just come free. So let them know about the family. Let them know about the experience that we had. And then her teaching would make him a man of faith. He would choose to serve God and help his people. Now, keep in mind that his mother's patient instruction built a beautiful son. That's right. As a result of her patience with him, helped him to grow up to be a fine, upstanding man. And, and she enabled her son to take the long look at life. All right? What does that say? Verse number 25 says, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Okay? So Moses saw the temporary nature of sin just for a season. So he chose to suffer with the people of God. He understood that suffering is temporary. And he came to believe that eternal riches are in the Lord. That's what he understood. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Okay? So Moses, what did he do? He learned to walk by faith, trusting in God in difficult times. So as I bring this lesson to a close, Mothers, Jochebed received a great reward. And so the reward of her mother's faith was that Moses was chosen by God to deliver his people. And after all of her efforts to train him up in faith were rewarded. All right? In other words, she did a great job. And as a result of her job, her faith was rewarded. Now, what do we need today? We need mothers who train their children to trust the Lord. There's an invitation to mothers to dedicate themselves to this task. Again, salvation invitation to those whose mothers have been faithful. Now, God is depending on you mothers. Over there in the book of Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, Solomon says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And if you go over to the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, in verses number 10, you have a responsibility to teach your children all about God. Now, I am sure that all of you will do all that you can for your children. You will do that because that's your nature. But there will be some things that they will have to do on their own. Now, I want to give you the plan of salvation before I leave you. By faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. And of course, I'm inviting you to join us again next week when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. Now, that is if it's God's will. In the meantime, I'm going to leave you tonight with Miss Regina Bell, and I would if I could. If I could, I'd protect you from the sadness in your eyes. Give you courage in a world of compromise. Yes, I would.
teach you all the things I've never learned. And I help you cross the bridges that I burned. Yes, I will. If I could, I wish I shield your But the part of life I gave you is in mine. I'll watch you grow so I can let you go. If I could, I'd help you make it through a hundred years. But I know that I can Never cry your tears, baby. But I will if I See? 